continues. Tensions mount around another old conflict in Europe. The multi-ethnic state of Bosnia is once again in crisis after the U.S. brokered a peace deal back in the 1990s. The peace deal that ended the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina 26 years ago is in danger of unraveling. 100,000 people were killed and millions displaced in the ethnically rooted war. Threats from Bosnian Serb leaders are calling for the withdrawal of support from state-level institutions in Republika Srpska. Could such a separatist push see a return to the conflict in the region? Good morning. I'm back in Bergamo Airport, which is an airport that has flights all over Europe, including those places that are less visited. Today, I'm going to Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is a country which uh, suffered from a very cruel war in 1992 while managing its independence from Yugoslavia. After the war, there were some Dayton agreements which uh, created the state uh, as we know it today. These agreements were meant to separate uh, the country into three major regions uh, in order to uh, suffocate these uh, ethnic clashes. In the recent months, there have been some attempts from the Serbian part to break away and form a new army and try to kind of uh, collide and clash with the other part as, they, as social tensions were rising. Today I'm going to the Serbian part, to the capital city of Republika Sprska, Banja Luka. I will try to see if these tensions are that high and that important as uh, the news tell us, or if it's just another exaggeration and things are just as normal as usual. We'll see. See you in Bosnia. I just arrived. I thought there would be a, like an exchange bureau for changing to the local money here in the airport, but it's so small that there isn't any. But uh, apparently I'm allowed to pay in euros for the bus that would that will take me to the uh, city. So here we are. Let's go. Just arrived to the city center. Now I'm heading to my hotel and I need to find urgently a place to exchange currency because I don't have one. Check out this place I just got for 25 euros. Absolutely amazing. And um, I just wanted to mention real quick that um, hotels in Banja Luka are not that cheap. So this is, I think this is the best option you can get for only 25 euros, that's so nice. And the guy from the this apartment just told me he would give me a free ride to the uh, bus station tomorrow because I'm going to Zagreb tomorrow. So he's just so nice and so kind. So yeah, I don't know. People here are so far like very, very, very helpful. I'm very, I don't know, happy to see foreigners. So he was interesting, interested in where I was from and all that stuff. So I don't know, so happy to be here. It's been only two hours since I arrived here and I already can see some of the things that some of the media was referring to, this very uh, big sense of nationalism here in this area. Um, I've seen many, many flags of uh, Republika Sperska, but almost none of Bosnia. Um, I guess they have a very strong identity and, and nationalistic views here, but I don't really see uh, where the um, uh, where, where's the tension? Where's the really like the pre the pre war uh, scenario that some media was uh, portraying? When talking to the people, people feel uh, identified as Serbian and they feel they are Serbian and they belong to Serbia. Now I'm heading back to the streets and let's see if I can see some of these difference or if I can talk to someone and investigate whether uh, there is really a social tension here and it is almost at the brink of war, as some people were saying.
I just bought myself here some lunch. Something that just happened, I was in the, in the fortress you just saw, which is like a kind of a castle fortress. And all of a sudden, a, a police car appeared. They started talking to me in, in Serbian, I guess. And they were like demanding me something. And I said, sorry, I don't speak Serbian. And they just let me go for some reason. And then they stopped another guy who did speak Serbian and they asked him for his ID, I think so. Yeah, whatever. you can see it but there are almost no Bosnian flags on the buildings in this square there is not a single one it's quite interesting <laughs> the church is here is the cathedral of Banja Luka it was destroyed by the Nazis in 1941 I think during the war and then it remained destructed only until 1991, which was when the Bosnian Republic um, succeeded from Yugoslavia. And it was only finished in 2006. I guess that's why it looks so pretty and so neat with almost any crack or whatever. Narodniroj means hero of the motherland, I guess. you see behind me this is the government of the Republika Sprska and these are very modern buildings and there's lots of people here uh, the national stadium is just next to it and there's a lot a lot of security in fact I was freaked out to uh, record here because they normally get a bit sketchy when you try to record uh, governmental buildings so yeah The Dayton Agreements, which I mentioned before at the beginning of the video, that separated the country into three regions, or at least two regions with three kind of different administrative bodies, also made uh, politics different to other countries. In the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the government is a rotative government, which means there is three prime ministers, one from, from the Serbs, one from the Bosniaks, and one from the Croatians, and they both have a rotative system in which they turn themselves into the presidency. In the past months, the Serbian Prime Minister Dodik has announced that he would try to create his own military separate from the rest of the country and also he would try to separate institutions in order to make them function as a one state. This has been accompanied by uh, an increasing Serbian nationalism here in this region, as you may have seen in the videos, many flags, many, uh, many uh, symbology, which was all supporting uh, Serbia and uh, the Sperska Republic. 
This is putting again the fear of a possible new war between the different regions of the country. Now we get to know why the TV and the media are, are warning of new renewed tensions. It is the unprecedented nationalism that this region is suffering. Uh, in the past it didn't used to be as strong as now, but it seems that now it's quite strong and you can feel it and see it everywhere in the streets, from the increased security and police presence to the many flags and symbology which is only representing the Serbs and support for their Prime Minister and what he's doing. Um, this might put a little bit of pressure under the integrity of the country. However, now I'm heading to this Perska Museum in order to see a little bit more how does this country work and what's the history of this region. I just left the museum, now I'm looking for a place to have dinner and this city has life at night, it's quite nice The museum had this very uh, long explanation of the history of Bosnia and especially Republika Sperska I could find that it was very very nationalistic First of all, it was always talking about the origins of the Serbs and the concept of Bosnia It never showed any kind of like a division of ethnicities in the region It just mentioned that Bosnia was created out of Serbs and it remained as that for the rest of history It never mentioned the existence of Bosniaks, Muslim Bosniaks as a separate group It only centered around this concept of uh, Serbians created Bosnia and it will remain as that forever. It, it also had this part of, uh, regarding uh, these concentration camps. The fascist Croatians took the Serbians to kill them. It had this uh, concept of the Serbians, we are the ones that we suffered the genocides and we didn't do anything. I mean, they didn't mention a word about Srebrenica and the, the genocide that happened there. So it was quite I don't know, frustrating to see like only one part of the history like saying that the Serbs were the only victims of all the genocides that happened around the world, I don't know. I think here we can see how nationalistic uh, this is getting, that even in history museums they are completely off-shadowing the rest of history and they are building like an ideology which is quite dangerous because it's based on lies and it's based on uh, cultural and historical inaccuracy. Now I'm back home, let's eat dinner. Bus station here, now I'm taking a bus to Zagreb. So this will be my bus for the next four hours. So I'm completely alone. This bus is like really, really small, but I'm completely alone. And the dude just asked for a uh, so he came back here, he asked me for my uh, personal information, like, he, he gave me like a sheet of paper and he said, um, write your, uh, your personal information, your data, and I was like, okay, um, he, didn't, he didn't speak English, he told me all of this in, in his language and I could understand a little bit because some words are similar to Russian. Um, so I, 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 re I wrote my, my, my personal data and, but, then I, I gave him the paper and he, he said like, no, uh, you have to write another thing. And like, he was like talking to me in his language, I didn't understand him much, but yeah, now I'm here and on to Zagreb, I guess. I just arrived to Zagreb. I still have five hours till uh, my plane leaves, so I will try to see as much as possible in this city in just that time. Uh, the bus experience was great, it was quite funny. And I tried to change uh, euros into kuna, which is the money that they use here. 
but the lady didn't understand me and she just exchanged me five euros. It was so weird, but well. Croatia was conquered for a long time by the Austro-Hungarian Empire and you can still see the influence in the buildings and the way the city is planned. I'm not sure I'm enjoying Zagreb, I mean, it's like very big and although it has things to see and do, I don't really like, I don't know, I prefer, I guess, smaller cities. I just had one of the best meals of my life and it only cost like 6 euros. Wow. I really recommend that place. It's called the submarine, I think. So yeah, if you ever come to Zagreb, check it out. This tunnel is meant to traverse the entire old city center from one point to another and it's like almost what one kilometer long and it looks like a nuclear bunker or something. I wanted to visit this square but it seems there's some official act because this is the house of the uh, president or at least where the government is so I guess I won't be able to go through these fence. Whatever. <laughs> I'm catching a flight to Podgorica. I guess that's the end of this video. Is Bosnia going into a war? I don't think so, at least for now. But I think the government, the central government, needs to conciliate uh, both republics. Because if not, if it doesn't uh, allow some concessions from the Republic of Perska, especially in those denying genocide and that, mm, it's gonna be hard to continue or to continue as a stayed together and probably they will um i mean it's for sure that the nationalist tensions will continue growing is denying genocide a good thing no but that's what uh the serbs are uh demanding so yes it's a very hard and complicated situation for the central government of bosnia but i just hope they they get out of this situation as soon as possible and they news about war in Bosnia and very soon. So that's all. Thanks for watching and see you soon, I hope. <laughs>